Hey everyone, I'm Alan Thrall here at Untamed Strength Gym, and today I want to talk about walking lunges, dumbbell or barbell. Walking lunges are my all-time favorite unilateral movement, and after this video, you might like them too, or you might at least give them a try. When I first got into powerlifting, I had a phase where I only did heavy fives, triples, doubles, and singles. I liked this high-intensity training, especially for squats, but I just couldn't give up leg training volume. So I decided to make up for it in the form of walking lunges. I was a lunge master. At one point after squats, I would do five sets of 20 lunges with a 185 pound barbell up and down a football field. I think I was so hooked on them because I saw Matt Kroc doing them with a log and he swore by them. And at this time, I loved watching Matt Kroc training videos. I'm saying this because lunges have always had a special place in my heart. I often see them done incorrectly or at least suboptimally, so I want to offer some instruction. One advantage to walking lunges over split squats or Bulgarian split squats is balance is much less of a limiting factor. If you've done Bulgarian split squats before, you know that balance is the most difficult part, and the fatigue that comes from stabilizing your front leg will force you to stop before the big muscles actually fail. During walking lunges, you get to bring your feet together at the start and completion of every rep, resetting your balance and taking a very brief rest at the top, similar to the rest at the top of a squat. This allows me to push my legs during walking lunges without feeling like I'm competing in a survivor challenge and without jumping my front foot around like hopscotch. Don't get me wrong, split squats and Bulgarian split squats are a fine movement. If you enjoy doing them, go ahead and continue doing them. For walking lunges, the most common mistake I see is people treating the lunge like a lunge stretch. We're not trying to stretch, we are trying to build muscle. Now obviously, all weight training movements stretch the muscle under load, but we aren't looking for maximum range of motion or maximum stride length. Your stride length actually doesn't matter to an extent. It's thought that a longer stride will target your glute muscles more than a shorter stride, but I get plenty of muscle fatigue and soreness in my glutes without exaggerating my stride length. You need to lunge only to a length that allows your front foot to stay flat, back knee down to the ground, and back foot heel raised. This works. It doesn't need to look like this. In fact, it shouldn't. Maximum stride length severely limits the amount of weight you can use because you can't apply very much force up. Your feet are pushing to the front and back. And in order to recover out of this position, you have to lean forward. If you're unable to keep your front foot flat and your heel lifts off the ground, your lunge length, stride length, might be a little bit too short. Instead, lunge forward and place your front foot flat on the ground. Drop your back knee straight down to the ground. Let your back heel lift off the ground. You should try to let your knee travel forward over your toes. This will use a little more quads than if your knee is behind your toes or heels. As you stand up, stand straight up. Think about moving the dumbbells up in a straight line. Do not swing your upper body forward. Do not swing the weight forward. The middle section of the lunge should resemble a stationary split squat, up and down. As you lower your back knee to the ground, do it under control. Do not slam your knee to the ground. Think of the eccentric of each lunge as equally important as the concentric portion. The down is as important as the up, so don't skip it by pile driving your knee into the ground. Take your time with these. Don't rush through them as fast as possible. Don't start the next lunge before fully completing the previous lunge. You can do these with a barbell or dumbbells. I like the extra isometric stretch on the traps with the dumbbell lunges, and it's easier to set up, which is why they have been my lunge of choice lately. If you find that your grip is giving out, you can use a bar on your back, or you can use straps on your dumbbell lunges. Yes, as non-hardcore as that sounds, you can use straps for dumbbell lunges. Personally, I've held on to 320 pound farmer's handles in each hand for 50 feet. So 60 to 70 pound dumbbells for a minute of lunges is no problem for me. As I go heavier, I'm sure I will use straps. Thanks for watching and always remember, Tread on time!